Hello, podcast world. It's June 2nd, 2020, 12, 17 p.m. And I'm here to talk about no justice, no peace. It's Blackout Tuesday. Um, this weekend, for the past week, in various locations and cities all over the world, has been a lot of protesting and rioting and violence and burning of buildings and everything of that nature. And I just want to go out, reach out to the families uh, of everyone who's ever dealt with profiling, police brutality, um, any shape, form of harassment, uh, any shape, form, or fashion of racism, uh, all of that, you know, especially in the black community. And I've, I've been watching a lot of TV, a lot of news, and well, not really a lot of news, but enough. And it pops up. My news is mainly, you know, Facebook and the internet. So I see the things that are going on and I see the division on how people feel we should handle this based off of emotions and anger. And people feel like, you know, what they're doing is justified and right. But that's not always the case. Um, if if what you're doing, you feel like it's the thing that what, what needs to happen and you know, go for it. I, I can't knock the next person. But there's a big difference between someone protesting and actually want things to change and somebody who wants to get a pair of Nikes or steal a television or anything else of that nature opportunist wise to be like, hey, this is this is like some form of reparations, you know? And it, it, even the people who went through it, the people that are still alive, that grew up in the uh, civil right age in the 60s and everything, and they witnessed their either parents or uncles and aunts and whoever get the dog sicked on them and, you know, go through all that, the water sprayed on them or shot and killed and, um, for those who look at it like this, and this is pretty much how history works, every so many years, generations, whatever, history repeats itself. So it's an endless cycle. Um, it's kind of like when the reference I'm going to use only, only works for those who have seen The Matrix. But on the second Matrix, The Matrix Reloaded, Neo made it to the architecture or whatever and we're just going to put it out there like if the Matrix was you know if we were in the Matrix or whatever he would be like the God figure the creator or however you want to look at it and he's like this is the seventh time or whatever that this is you know taking the this like Neo is considered the anomaly which this Jesus based character or whatever the one and he's like he just counts from the reappearance of the anomaly and he goes on to speak on saying that uh, it's happened seven times before uh, you walk through that door you could save the person that you love Trinity you could save the Trinity you could save her life but everyone will die well on the other hand you could go through this door and I'll give you enough to repopulate Zion and of course you know they go they they, they have the whole little spiel and it goes boils down to a matter of choice and now when I speak on choice I speak and say this that's the issue free will you have the decision to make the choice to do what's right. I 
ever since I was little, you know how like they'll be like, what did you want to be when you're growing up? I wanted to be a hero. You know how people say I want to be a doctor or a fireman? And there's people out there that uh, they're innocent. Wanted to be a police officer or uh, maybe a soldier or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because maybe their dad or mom was a doctor or a nurse or a, a, a teacher or, or a principal or whoever had the influence at that time in their life or whatever they witnessed or whatever. Oh, I want to be an actor. I want to be a um, football player. I want to be a musician. You know, I want to be the next uh, Michael Jackson or or whoever. You know, I want to be the next Aretha Franklin, Beyonce. So, at some point in time, in your innocence, you know, like you come into the world innocent. Hate is taught. Like I, when I was a kid, I didn't know to hate white people. I didn't know to hate my own kind. I didn't know to hate, well, we didn't really have anything at my school. You know, maybe um, a one like Hispanic family and one Indian family, and they had pretty much enough kids and stuff to go through the whole district. But point being, I was never taught to hate. I was taught to love. And, and going through, uh, you know, school, I started learning that people hated me because I was me. Classmates, they hated me because their parents said, you shouldn't like him. His skin color is different. And complete strangers, they just hated me, you know? And I've never liked the feel of being hated. I've never liked the feel of hating someone. And deep down in my heart, I can't sit there and say that I've never hated anyone. There's people out there in the world who I feel like they wronged me and I hate them, you know? But that's not a good feeling. Love is a good feeling. It's a good feeling to love. It's a good feeling to be loved, you know? And it's not a good feeling to stand against hate and stand for love while someone over here that you love is hating like stop the hate and even in the midst of all the drama that's going on um the spark that 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 took the flame that this go around because right now it seems like we're in a perpetuated never ending fight for justice and they say no justice no peace it just seems like if that's the case it don't seem like we're ever going to be at peace. Like, the just, wars happen for a reason. And if you look back in history, every time there was war, there was change. So I'll, I'll, I'll credit that to, had not um, wars like the Alamo, where they drew a line in the sand and, 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 and yeah, a line in the sand and said, cross this line if you stand with me, you know? And everyone crossed that line. Everyone stood there, knowing that they didn't have what it, they didn't have enough. They were the underdogs, and they didn't necessarily they lost. <laughs> they they got they got it handed to them or whatever. But they they stood their ground, and because they did that, in the long run, change came. And that's why we remember the Alamo. Uh, Especially if you're a Texan, you know. Um, I don't know about any other state, but I know that when I was in seventh grade, we had to, they taught us Texas history. And with that being said, every year, February come around, and they teach you just enough. They teach you the icing on the cake. They teach you that everybody knows some of the same names when it comes to black history. But nobody ever seems to know the forgotten and some people there are so many um historical black history moments that are so forgotten and i feel like in that 28 days or less of history not only did the school fail us but our communities failed us because i'm not going to sit there and say that i knew a lot of these movies that are coming out of people that are like now passing 
or moments that happen in different cities and states. And um, if I was into football before the movie Remember the Titans came out, I should have knew about the history of the integration and Remember the Titans and all that. I should have knew about that. Like TV and movies shouldn't teach me what I should be learning in school, um, like or at home in my community or whatever, because that's the issue. A lot of people feel like the school's job is to teach when you learn more from your family and peers and friends than you ever would learn from a teacher. There are some teachers out there that I give credit to that I'll never forget that taught me. They taught me math. They taught me science. They taught me reading. They taught me English. But they, some of them even taught me life lessons. And those are the teachers that I stand with. The teachers that if you don't do right, they're going to tell you this is what's going to happen. You hear me, you know? Uh... I have some teachers that, you know, some of my favorite teachers, and I feel like teachers are very discredited. But we, we, and underpaid. Like, I know there's always a financial issue. I know that if you go to certain schools where there's more wealth in the community, that, uh, or you're brought in more championships or whatever, you know, then there's more money there for the school compared to some of these schools that I'm just glad that I went to the school that I went to. Went to Liberty Island High School and here in Texarkana. And the schools here compared to schools that I've uh People, like when I went to college and I came across schools from other places from California, Dallas and Houston and out of state period, like Georgia, like out of state schools or whatever. If you went to a school with metal detectors or whatever, I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you. That means that there is enough violence coming into your school that they feel for your safety. Like this is it, You have lean on me moments to where you have to worry about what's outside the school and is your child going to make it home safely or is there gang activity and is that the reason why they're um, afraid to go to school or leave school or, you know, like you have to worry about who's watching school. Then you have to worry about, um, I'm going to say sexual predators that are, you know, I would say looking for your daughter, but some of them are looking for your son. Like, it doesn't matter. Some people are just sick, you know? That's sick. And they are there trying to lure them away. And it's just crazy, you know? This, this, if they're not learning it at home, if they're not, if the community isn't safe, and is it saving them, then who will? Now, George Floyd's family, his brother stood there and said that that's not what his brother would have wanted in his name. And I can understand where he's coming from. Everyone is, uh, like I said, people are upset. And it's been going on forever. Like... And is there's there's that's that's because and I feel like the reason people feel the way they feel is not because it, it's it, it's happening it's happening it's happening and they speak on no justice no peace it's because like this like I say like I say no justice no peace they're not doing anything about it you know like it's so easy to become a cop it's ridiculous. You're going to the academy or whatever, a um, couple of months in, months out, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, you got the badge, you got the gun, and they're not, like, that's all they do is, is once you are 
a citizen with a gun, a policeman with a gun, a gangster with a gun, a bully with a gun. If you got the juice to pull that trigger, then I don't know what to say. Like, if you if you willing to take a life, like Black Lives Matter. And I can't speak of what a person's soul is like, but there is this is my thing. There has to be a way to do the job without taking life like can't you like the way that you uh, stopping these protesters with tear gas or the way that you uh, shooting them with rubber bullets like um, why why can't we at least like level down to level up why can't we be like you know non-lethal why, why are we focusing on non-lethal methods to stop uh, criminals, why aren't we getting these guns off the streets? And that's on that's on all ends, you know. In 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 certain places or whatever, they have really strict uh, gun policies, really strict. Fortunately, uh, you know, fortunately, that's good in a way, but. At the end of the day, everyone still reverts to saying something about the Second Amendment and the NRA and all that kind of stuff. And here in Texas, it's easy to get a gun. <laughs> it's so easy. Like, oh, you want a gun? No, oh, let me see your license. Okay. No, um, your background is clear, you know what I'm saying? Here you go. Um... I walk up out of Walmart or Gandar uh, Mountains, which I, I I don't even know if they're in business anymore, or the pun shop or wherever you know you, you people are buying and selling guns. So you got you got these guns. When I when I walk into this one uh, pun shop that I go to sometimes with my friends. And behind that counter is an arsenal of assault rifles and guns. And I just be like, man, is, are the Terminators coming or something? Like, is it a war? Like, who needs these all these kind of guns or whatever? And I have, um, I have friends out there that are gun lovers. I have friends in the military that, you know, they have their service revolver, all of that. You know, they got their pistol. And I understand that. They've been trained. They know how to use a gun, and they know how to shoot, and they know who to shoot. You know, they, they, they you know, I feel, you know, a little bit better about that. But they're not out there just shooting anybody, you know. They're not out there, like, the, you know, most people that I know, we not killers. Most people I know, we just want to, you know, if, if you... In the, in, in, the, in the deed of protection you're trying to protect someone or protect your family and you have that gun then that's a different situation like that is that is like second amendment, uh, second amendment 101 like the reason I have this gun is I feel threatened I feel the need to protect my family based off of where you live all of that you know and that is like the only time that, you know, that most, that, I don't know. I can't really understand people's desire to have a gun, and which is also, in my world, a desire to want to take someone's life at some point in time. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, it's dealing with guns, for some people, it gives them an adrenaline rush. Some people... It scares them. They're afraid. They're like, oh, man, you know, I don't want to do with that. And I know that you've seen all of those TV shows that some kid got a hold to their people's gun and thought it was cool, maybe took it to school, or maybe had a friend come over after school or whatever the case was, and, like, were playing with it because they, they thought it was a toy, you know, kids and you know how kids are, which... 
you know, it ended up like someone getting uh, hurt or shot or, or whatever, you know. And at the end of the day, here's another thing about the guns. As, like, children, we buy them guns and putting the guns in their hands and making it seem like that's okay. Like, and then, you know, I've been playing video games, violent video games, shooting games, whatever, um, since arcade days, you know, and since, like, regular Nintendo. And I, I just feel like we we teach a lot of violence and it's not it's it's like we teach uh, a lot of violence a lot of hate and we should be teaching more about love alright well got uh guess it's about that time to let y'all go and I'll leave y'all with this love don't hate better not bitter let's uh don't forget to like comment subscribe um check out all outlets or whatever i'm also now um streaming on uh facebook uh videos and that's you know that's a new uh thing for me so i'm, I'm gonna be on there too and what else uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, like all of that is going to be in the description. All the details that you need to uh, get in touch with me or make a donation or subscribe or or what, whatever, you know. It's, it's about building this thing to the next level. And if you feel what I'm saying... Let me know. Like, let me know how y'all feeling about what's going on out there as far as the uh, no justice, no peace for uh, George Floyd. And um, I'll, you know, speak with y'all later. Thank you for listening to my podcast.